Today we're going to continue working on the comment section which we started building in the previous episode. And for this episode specifically, we're going to work on the PHP code which will actually insert whatever comment we write and submit inside the form down here inside our database. So we're just going to go ahead and insert stuff into the database in this episode. And for the next episode, we will actually focus on getting the data from the database or getting the actual comments and showing them on the website. Now, before we start any kind of PHP code, I want to show you guys a couple of changes I made to the HTML and CSS code from the previous episode. Now, I did actually went ahead and switched out my HTML5 video for a um, iframe video, which I just simply linked to on my YouTube channel. You guys can go into YouTube and find any kind of YouTube video and just simply create an iframe by embedding it. Um, and I also went to my style sheet and gave my iframe a width as 853 pixels and a height as 480 pixels, which is a very basic 480 pixel format. Now, I also went ahead and gave it a dark border so we can actually see the video because my videos on my channel tend to be pretty white. So now we can actually see it. I also went ahead and gave the text area a new width so it had the same width as my iframe. And yes, I know that it doesn't have uh, 853 pixels width, um, but if I were to say 853, it would actually be longer than the iframe. So 850 would actually be just as long. So now that we have that cleared out, we can actually get started on the PHP code. So what we need to do first is we need to create a new document. And the way I'm doing it here is that once we do actually go inside our form and we need to set a method and an action, we're not going to point to a document that's going to run the PHP code and then insert stuff to the database. Instead, we're going to learn how to create functions and run functions instead of entire documents when we do actually hit any kind of submit button, which is very cool to learn. So why not do it? So inside our form tag, I'm just really quickly going to set a method and I'm going to set this one to a post method. And you guys should already know the difference between a post and a get method by now, but just to kind of refresh it for you guys, a post method, we can actually see the data inside the URL because all this information we have down here, like uh, the UID, the date, and the message we're writing, they need to be passed on to our function, which is going to insert it into the database. And we're going to use a post method to pass it on to this function which means we can't see the data inside the URL. A get method, you can. After we set the method, I'm going to set an action. Now the action is not going to be set to a document, like I said. So we're just going to go ahead and leave this empty for now and go on to our empty document we created a few seconds ago. I'm going to save this one inside my root folder as comments.inc.php. And inside of here, we're going to have all the functions that has something to do with comments inside this website. So I'm going to open up my PHP tags. I'm not going to close the PHP tags because we're just going to have PHP code in here. So there's no reason to close the PHP tags. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a function. And I'm actually going to go ahead and give this function a name so we can actually reference to it. Now the name we're going to give this one is set comment and this is not something you have to call it i just like calling it like this because usually when you want to insert data into the database you call it set if you want to get data from the database you would call it get comment instead let's actually go ahead and call it set comments with an s so now that we have the function created we can actually go ahead and copy the name with the parentheses need to remember it and go back to our front page and inside our action, we're going to go ahead and write double quotes because we need to open up for the PHP code again. Punctuation. And we're going to insert the function name that we have from the function page. Now, at the moment, our front page does not know what comments.inc.php is or where it is. So we need to actually link to it at the very top here. So I'm going to say include. single quotes, comments.inc.php, semicolon. So now we can actually reference to the function and it can actually find it. So if we do actually go to our front page, refresh, you guys can see we get no error messages. Now here's one problem though. At the moment, 
if I were to actually have stuff inside my function in here, let's say I have an echo. I'm just gonna go echo hi there, like so. And if I go and refresh my website, you guys can see we get hi there, which is because right now, because we're referencing to a function, rather than an entire document like we did in the previous episodes, it's always gonna just run the function even though we didn't hit the submit button yet. So we need to actually tell it that unless we hit the submit button, it shouldn't run this function, okay? So one little tip for you guys, right now we did actually give it a name as submit. I would actually go ahead and call it comment submit with a big S because right now it is gonna reference directly to a, you know any kind of button that has a name as comment submit because if we did actually have more than one form with a, where there was a button that was called submit, it would actually go ahead and run the code if I were to hit any of those buttons. So if I have many functions in here that runs when I hit the button submit, it's gonna run all the functions. So we need to make a very specific name for this form that we have inside the front page. So if I save this one, just to kind of copy it, go back to my comments.ink.php, and as the very first thing inside my function, I'm gonna write if, an if statement, and inside the parentheses, I'm gonna say is set parentheses. So now that we have this function called is set inside our if statement, we can now say that unless we have a very specific variable that exists somewhere, it shouldn't run all this code down here. So just to kind of give you guys an idea, let's go back to the front page. And as you guys can see, right now we have a form here and we gave it a very unique name inside the button. So unless we hit this button called common submit, it should not run the code. And we do that by going back inside our function and inside the is set function, we're gonna say variable underscore post because we did actually set a post method, brackets, single quotes. And now we can actually go ahead and tell it that we have something called, what was it called? Comment submit. So if this is not set, then don't even bother running the code, okay? So now we can actually go ahead and delete this echo and insert it in here instead. And now if I refresh the website, you guys will notice it disappears because now we did not click the button. If I were to click the button, we get high there. So that's, that's basically how this works. So what we can do now is we can actually go ahead and write the code, which will actually insert the data from the form into the database. But before we can do that, we need to actually have a connection to our database. Now, the way we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna go ahead and open up a new document. And inside this document, we're gonna create a connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna open up my PHP tags. And the very first thing in here is going to be a new variable called con, which is short for connect. Let's just go ahead and save this really quickly as dbh.inc.php inside the root folder, of course. Now, after the variable called connect, we're gonna say equal to, sorry, not quotation marks, we're gonna write my SQL I underscore connect parentheses. So now we created a function called my SQL I underscore connect, which basically says that we need to run a connection to some kind of database. And the parameters, or at least the information on which database we need to connect to, is going to be inside the parentheses. So inside here, we need to set single quotes. And the first parameter is going to be which server we want to connect to. Now, right now, we do actually use a localhost server. So we're just gonna go ahead and write localhost. Now, the next parameter in here is going to be the username that we have for the database. In our case, since we're using XAMPP, it's going to be root for both uh, Windows and Mac users. Now the next one here is going to be a bit different because depending on your Mac or PC, this might change. Now I'm not entirely sure if it's because MAMP changes the password or if it's because it's on a Mac, but I don't think that Mac users need to do this differently. I'm not entirely sure, but if this does not work and you can't get a connection going, you need to make sure you write root inside of this. Now in our case, because I do believe we're using XAMPP, we don't have to do this. Comma, space, and now we need to tell it what the name is of the database. 
Now we did actually go ahead and call ours, or at least in my case, I called mine comments section, if I remember correctly. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So now we do actually have a database connection going. Now we could also write an error message. Um, and why not just do that really quickly? So we're gonna write an if statement down here, which basically says, okay, if this up here does not run, like if this does not work by writing inside the parentheses, exclamation mark, variable con, then do this down here. So if we do get an error message and this does not work, then go ahead and write an error message. And our error message could actually be to create a die function, which tells it to kill the connection. And we're gonna go ahead and write um, connection failed colon space. And afterwards we could actually let it tell us what kind of error message we're getting by including a piece of uh, PHP function here. So we can actually write mysqli underscore connects underscore error, which is a function. So now it's basically gonna tell us an error message if we don't get a proper connection going. So if you guys get an error message, go ahead and write root in here. That was the basic idea I had with this password up here. Um, so now there should be a connection. So now we just need to go ahead and go to our front page or inside the header, depending on what you did. And we're gonna go ahead and include it on top of our include uh, comments.ink.php function. We're just gonna go ahead and copy paste this. And we're gonna set the database connection up here. Now, in some cases, you might want to have the database connection as the very top thing when you do actually include documents because some of these documents might want to include the database connection as well. Like they might need to have a connection going. So we need to have the database connection linked to first. So now that we have this, we can actually go back to our comments that link to PHP and create the connection. So the first thing we're gonna do inside our if statement here is we're gonna go ahead and say variable underscore post because we do actually need to get all the different data that we have from the form that we have inside the front page. And we need to make sure we actually get it before we can actually use it for something and insert it into the database. So we use the post method. And the first one we had was called UID as a name. The second one we had was called date. And the third one was called message. So these are the three ones that we need to actually get from the URL. So in here, we're gonna write a variable underscore post brackets, single quotes, and the first one was UID, semicolon at the end. And let's just go ahead and give this one a name. So we can say variable UID is equal to this from the URL. We're gonna copy this, paste it underneath it three uh, two times, and we're gonna change the names for them. So the second one is going to be date, as well as the name inside the post method. We're gonna change the third one to message, again, as well as our post method. And there we go. Now we have all the data from the form actually inserted inside the function so we can use it. So now that we have this, let's actually go ahead and create our SQL sentence, which is going to insert this into the database, or at least tell the database what to do with this data. So we're gonna, write, uh, we're gonna go ahead and write variable SQL equal to double quotes and semicolon. So now we just need to create a very basic insert statement using SQL. So I'm gonna say insert into, and we called it comments, I do believe, inside the database. Let's actually go ahead and double check. E yes, it's called comments. Parentheses, values, parentheses. So now the first one is going to tell it, okay, what are the column names that we want to insert this into? And the second parentheses are going to be the actual value we're gonna insert into those columns. So inside the first parentheses, we're gonna go ahead and write UID, comma, date, comma, message. So now we have all the three different columns, uh, at least the names of them. Now, don't mind that mine actually turns blue down here, uh, it's just because data is also a function, so it turns blue. Uh, just go ahead and ignore that. It should be seen as yellow. Inside the second parentheses, we're gonna start inserting this data that we collected from the form, which we have up here. And the first one is going to be, uh, at least inside the values, is going to be single quotes, variable UID, comma. 
The second one is going to be single quotes as well. Variable date, comma, and again, single quotes, variable message, and there we have it. Now, just to make this look nice, you could always take the values, move down to the next line, so we have some kind of great overview over it. You could do that. Now, for the next line, we're going to actually insert this data or query it into the database. Now, the way we're going to do that is that we're going to create a variable called result, because now we actually want a result from this SQL string that we had on top of here. We're going to set it equal to variable con, which is the connection we had inside the database file here. So now we're actually telling it, okay, create a connection to the database. And with this connection, I want you to query this SQL string up here. So we're going to point to a method called query parentheses semicolon. And inside the parentheses, we need to insert the name or insert the value we want to actually query to the database, which is going to be dollar sign SQL or the variable we created called SQL. So that's basically it. Now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and try to run this. So I'm actually going to go ahead and go into my front page, refresh, and let's actually just go ahead and there we go. Oh, we do actually get an error message. We did not link something correctly. Uh, we did not link to the database correctly, apparently, on line three. So let's just go ahead and double check what we did wrong here. DB8. Ah, okay. It's not DBA, it's DBH which some of you guys might have caught that error. So now let's actually go ahead and refresh again. And there we have it, no error messages. So now if I were to actually write something down here like, hi there, exclamation mark, this is a test message, exclamation mark. If I write comments, ah, we get an undefined variable, ah, of course. Yeah, so we don't actually have a connection to the database, which is because right now we did actually set the connection inside the function down here. So what we need to do is we do actually need to go inside our comments.inc.php and this variable down here called con, which we do actually have inside our connection here, we need to reference to it by uh, inserting it inside the parentheses of our function name. So up here where we have set comments, parentheses, we need to tell it, okay, we're referencing to a variable from outside this function. So we need to include the variable con inside the parentheses here, as well as inside where we do actually use the function inside our website, which is down here where we have the form. So I'm gonna insert our variable con in, this, in there as well. And now that we've done that, let's actually go back to our front page, refresh, write hi there, just hi there. And as you guys can see, when I do actually hit comments, we don't get any kind of error messages. So now if I were to go back to my uh, database, refresh, you guys can see that now we do actually have a comment with the ID as one. Let me actually zoom in for you guys. With the username as anonymous, the date is set to whatever date it is right now. And the message is hi there. So now we did actually insert something inside the database, which actually works. Now you could as well include some kind of message that, you know, inside the website itself, lets us know if we did actually submit it correctly or if there was an error message or something. So we do actually know that the comment was actually posted. For this episode, this is all I wanted to do. So all that with error handling and all that extra stuff, we're gonna go ahead and do that at the end at one of the later episodes. So for now, this is all we needed to do for this episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.